Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to set up and host webinars using Zoom. Now, just a little background about me. My name is Austin. I, I set up tons of webinars for the companies that I work with. In the last year or so, I've probably done about 20. I've used a bunch of different softwares. I can say with full confidence that Zoom is one of the better softwares for hosting webinars, just in the simplicity and the speed that you can set one of these things up. So before we actually jump into the setup, let me just show you what the f basic features and the pricing looks like for Zoom. So they have three different plans that you can choose from. I'm just gonna assume you're gonna go with the basic plan. You can always upgrade later, obviously. The basic plan allows you to have 500 attendees to your webinar with 100 panelists. So that's basically 100 hosts. 100 speakers is another way of putting it. You can pay with a monthly subscription or an annual subscription. By default, $79 a month for the basic plan which just to give you an idea, the biggest competitor, probably the biggest software on the market right now for webinars other than Zoom is Webinar Jam, which I also personally use. It's a great software as well. Webinar Jam has several payment plans as well, and Zoom is comparable with Webinar Jam's basic plan. 500 attendees per webinar. With Webinar Jam, you're limited to two hours. On, on Zoom, you can have up to six hours, but Otherwise, pretty much the same features. So let's actually get into the setup on how you actually do these. So for right now, I don't know if they plan on adding this in the future, but for right now, you can't actually create webinars from within the actual Zoom application on your computer. You have to do that on the Zoom website itself. So go to zoom.com and then in the top right, click my account sign into your account and then in this tab on the left side you'll see webinars and here you'll see a full list of all the webinars that you have upcoming and you can see i have one here that's upcoming that i already created but let's just go to the right side here and schedule a webinar so here you can name your webinar so i'm just going to call this how to run five figure webinars i'm also going to add a description i definitely recommend you take the time to create a title and a description because these will appear on the registration page later all right so template i'll come back to this later but basically if you're if you're creating multiple webinars you're somebody that's doing webinars all the time you can create a template that saves all of your settings so you don't have to do it over and over again next is the date obviously just pick a date duration one hour you can go up to as long as six hours if you want set your time zone you can make it a recurring webinar if that's something that's useful to you if you're you're running webinars consistently every week or every day for whatever reason you can set that up you can even get it to stop after a certain number of occurrences registration you can make people register i always use this because i like to capture people's contact information authentication this is for security i i never use this personally but if you want people to sign up with a certain account and then they have to sign they have to attend the webinar with that account you can make sure that happens passcodes again i don't personally use this i know a lot of people that do if you want to require a passcode, personally, I don't use them because it just creates one more barrier of entry to get people in there. I'm trying to get high attendance rates, so I personally turn that off. The next section is video. This is whether or not the video turns on, the camera turns on when, when a host joins or a panelist joins. I always turn this off by default. Let them turn their cameras on themselves. Audio, you can choose telephone or, or computer audio. I have mine just default both q a so there's actually a q a section of the the webinar that's separate from the chat so people can submit questions and then you can answer them and then it sort of sticks the the question there so that's useful i, I always keep that on enable practice session i always turn this on as well this allows you to run basically a test webinar in advance this is super useful especially if you have a co-host and you kind of want to just drill the webinar and just run through the presentation really quick you can set up a practice session whenever you want. So if your webinar is two weeks in the future, you can do a practice session whenever you want just to get familiar with the interface and what it's going to look like. Enable HD, I leave that off. Webinar HD quality, I turn this on. Make webinar on demand. What this does is if somebody joins late, they can join at the beginning of the presentation. So if I turn this on, it's going to automatically record the webinar. And so let's say they join 15 minutes late, it'll start the presentation at the beginning for them they can they can choose to scrub through in the webinar to wherever you are live i usually turn this off because i just want them to join wherever i'm at in the presentation they can always go back and watch the recorded webinar and that's the next option here record it you can record it locally or in the cloud and the last option here is approve or block entry from users from specific countries or regions i'm not sure what people use this for but it's i guess it's a good option that's it just scroll down to the bottom hit schedule for your webinar there's some more settings we're going to mess with in a second, but we have to set up the initial here. So if I open the Zoom app, you can actually see the webinar is now in this tab for the events for today, just like a regular meeting, a regular Zoom meeting. So that's great. And at any time, I can just hit the start button and join. In this case, this is a webinar that's already ongoing. I'll show you this in a second. Well, let's come back to the settings here. So if we go back to the webinars tab, you can now see I have a brand new webinar here. 
how to run five figure webinars. You can see a practice session button right here. Now, if I actually click on the name of the webinar itself, it's going to present us with a bunch of new options we can use to customize even further. Details tab. This is what we just basically set up a second ago. This is the, the name of the webinar, the description, et cetera. Now you'll notice down in the bottom right here, there's a, the button that says save as template. So again, if you're somebody like me that's doing webinars all the time and you've got a certain, you've got certain settings that you use every single time, no matter what, you can save them as a template. So you don't have to Every time you create a new webinar, you don't have to reset all the settings from scratch. You can just hit save as template, name the template, and then and then just use that every time. All right, so in the tabs here, you've got details. We just covered that. Invitations. This is where you're going to get the registration link itself. If you've got an email list or whatever, you want to send out the link. This will send people to the registration page. Now, what's really cool about this is you can actually add source tracking. So if you're somebody that has, if you're a business that has an, a big email list and you've got a big text list, and let's say you've got a huge Instagram following and you want to, you want to track which of those three sources people are coming from, you can hit add Instagram, add email list, add. Now we've got two unique links for both of those sources. And so I can send this link to my email list, this link to my Instagram people through DMs or whatever. And when those people register, it just tracks them. Super useful. So you can see at the end of the webinar where people came from. Down at the bottom, this is where you'll be able to see people that registered, the total registrants. You can also import people from CSV. Let's go back to the top and, and go to email settings. Here you can edit your contact email. By default, this is just whatever your Zoom, your Zoom contact email is. Then you've got a panelist invite option. This just allows you to send emails to whatever other panelists you have on here. Then you have a confirmation email that you can customize. So when this is just, just the email that people get after they register. So let's edit that to see what that looks like. So you can change the subject line. You can change the body in the middle and you can change the text at the end. So I'd say one of the downsides of Zoom emails, I'm an email marketing guy. They don't give you a ton of flexibility with how you customize your emails. I would personally like to be able to customize the entire thing. They don't let you do that. The body, most of it's already pre-written. They already have you know, this opening line, they've got these buttons already here. They've got this, please submit questions, blah, blah, blah. And then they've got all this text here. You can't change any of this. You can only change the subject line, the middle text and the end text. And then they've got a bunch of stuff at the bottom. I guess it is what it is. The workaround here is when, when people register, you can set up some kind of automation like a Zapier, push those people to convert kit or active campaign or whatever you're using and then customize the emails from there. So you can set up your confirmation email. You can also set up a reminder email. So anybody that actually registers, you can set up what that looks like. One hour, one day, one week in advance. Again, same problem. You can really only customize the subject line and the middle text. Attendee email. And again, you can customize the subject line. You can customize part of the body. And right here is where you'd probably send, you'd want to attach whatever the link is to the replay, if you uploaded it to YouTube or whatever. And then absentee email, similar to the last one, anybody that registered but did not attend, you can customize an email for them as well. And then all of these options allow you to send a preview email if you want to look at what the actual email looks like in a real inbox. Let's go to the next section. Next section is the waiting room. So you can customize what this page looks like. So you send out a registration link, they register, and then they go to actually show up to your webinar, but you're not live yet they get put into a waiting room. So here's a preview of what the waiting room looks like. By default, it fills in what the webinar title is and then what time it was scheduled. You can input some text here. You can change the image. You can even make it a video. You can upload your own image. Customize it however you want. Very simple, very basic, exactly what you need. Let's go to the next section, branding. Okay, so in this section, we're, there's a couple of different things going on. You can customize the webinar wallpaper, what the image looks like behind your slides and stuff like that. You can customize the background for all the hosts and panelists. You can change the way your name tag looks. This is stuff I don't really typically mess with, but if you really want to get deep into it, you can start customizing this stuff. Now down here towards the bottom is where we customize what the actual registration page itself looks like. By default, this is what the registration page looks like for this particular webinar. Just a simple title headline at the top. It says how to run five figure webinars, gives the date and time, basic description that I wrote out, and then just the registration captured name and then email address and then request to join. On this settings page, it allows you to add just a little bit more customization. You can put a banner at the top. It gives you the suggested size for that banner. You can put a logo in there. You can also add information about the speakers to the page itself. So let me just add myself to the page so you can see what that looks like. Add new speaker, 
upload an image, enter their name, title, you can add a logo if you'd like, company name, social media profiles. So there I am as a speaker. Now if I refresh the registration page, you can now see me as a speaker down at the bottom, my, my picture, my title, and two of my social media icons. Let's go to the next section. We have polls and quizzes, and then shortly after that, we have survey. These are basically the same thing. I don't know if Zoom's plan is to merge them together, but they're very similar. But these are great. Just to show you an example, if you, if you want to run some kind of poll or quiz, here I created a sample quiz. You can, you can create a question, however many answers you want. You can make it a quiz so there's a correct answer, or you can just collect information like a survey. Very useful. All right, under the Q&A section, I, I don't really mess with the defaults here, but you can if you want. Hit edit, allow attendees to submit questions and allow people to submit anonymous questions. And then if you want, you can make it so attendees can upvote or comment on other people's questions. Next section is live streaming. This section of the settings doesn't really seem to be particularly useful. It gives you a little blurb about connecting to other platforms like YouTube or Facebook, but it doesn't actually give you the option to connect here. You have to do that from within the Zoom interface. And then similarly, integrations tab. This tab is just completely blank. I don't know if it's just broken on my end or what. I'm not really sure. Those are the basic settings you're going to want for most webinars. So let's go back to the webinars page. And this is a webinar that's currently running right now. Let's just assume we're running a practice session. Click practice session just to see what the interface looks like. And here we are in the actual webinar interface itself. You can see in the top middle here, it says start webinar. So we're actually, the webinar has not started. So you can take the time to set up whatever settings or presentation type stuff on your end, however you want. Turn your audio and video on, test that out. Don't forget you can, you can actually test your microphone. You can test your video long before you actually start the webinar itself. And then just like a regular Zoom meeting, you can see all the same basic kind of settings. You can see the participants. You can actually manually invite people from here. You can see the chat. People have the option to raise their hand. You can share your screen and you can change who can share their screen. You have the Q&A section, which allows people to submit dedicated questions just for the Q&A. Basic things like recording options. Here's your live stream button if you want to go live on, on YouTube or Facebook or anything like that. Make sure if you are going live on another platform, you set this up before you actually start the webinar. Otherwise, you're going to create yourself a little bit of a technical mess. When you're ready to start the webinar, you just hit the start button. And now it's live. And that wraps it up. Zoom is a great platform for running webinars. Very simple, very straightforward. The price is reasonable. It's comparable with Webinar Jam. You have everything you need. The only thing differently that I personally do that's not built into Zoom, at least not currently, is I personally like to capture people's information, like their name and their phone number. And then I like to push them emails from my own dedicated email marketing software that I have complete control over. I can fully customize the emails. So once they register to my, to my webinars, I have them in my little email ecosystem and I just continuously send them emails unless they want to opt out. That's how you use Zoom for webinars. I appreciate you watching. If you found this video useful, please subscribe and hit that like button. And if you're a business owner that wants help turning webinars into a consistent cash flowing machine for your business, schedule a call with me down below and I'll help you turn webinars into a massive source of revenue for your business. Thanks for watching.